In this YouTube video, I'm going to show you how to stop a defense that I think some of the best defensive players in Madden are going to be using over the course of the next couple of months via the latest AP update and kind of some of the meta things that you want to be prepared for in your offense in any year of Madden, but especially with the way the game is going to be playing going forward. Now, if you're new to the channel, I want to ask you to go ahead and to hit the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel, and it just allows you to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies that we release every single day here on the YouTube channel. Now, the 4-3 even 6-1 is arguably the best blitzing defense in Madden. Um, you're going to basically be able to guarantee pressure. It's going to be very difficult to block it. Um, it's got great sheds as well within the defense, uh, within the defensive concept. I actually put out an ebook on the 4-3 even 6-1, which if you haven't picked that up yet, you can get that in my Patreon membership, kind of showing you how to use the defense, how to use the pressure, um, and then also how to adjust out of it based on tendency. And I have to say it's a really good defense. It applies really good pressure, and it forces the opponent to have to – it actually takes the – the ability to dictate on the defense side of the ball, which you really haven't had much of that this year. So um, I'm going to talk about how we can actually counter this defense with um, trips tight in, uh, which is my favorite offense in the game. I actually have an ebook on that as well in my Patreon. The cool part about the membership is that if you just sign up for only $10 a month, you don't only get access to one of the ebooks, but you actually get access to all 18 of them. So every offense, every defense, every update to the ebook, uh, which we typically release new updates every single week in the Patreon membership. Um, as well as any new ebooks that we release, you'll get in instant access to all of that by just being a Patreon member. So if you want to sign up for that, it's only $10 a month. It's the best way to support me as a creator. And like I said, you get everything, literally everything for $10 a month. Let's talk about um, trips out in. So I set the curl flat audible. Other than that, honestly, look good. And then we're going to come out in. Um, actually, you know what? For the run audible, I do want to show this RPO zone alert bubble. Uh, okay, so we're just going to come out in PA counter count. And defensively, we're going to come out in Tampa 2. Now, most of the time, they're going to base a line and press their defense. And basically, they're going to say, it's a chess match. Am I blitzing or am I not blitzing? That's basically what they're uh, going to say. So if you take a look here, if they, they're they just going to blitz their linebackers and then basically you know, kind of stand right in here. And what you'll see is the pressure will come in. Very good pressure. It's very hard to block it. To be honest with you, I wouldn't even worry with blocking it because... At the end of the day, um, the blitz is so good that, I mean, you can try, like, if you block a tight end here, uh, but what you should see here is it's going to come in. It, the bottom line is it's going to come in. The only way it doesn't come in is if you block seven, okay? Uh, so, again, they're little – because they're sending six, and they're standing right over the A gap. I mean, they're sending a good amount of people. And so, you know, if you block your tight end here, then what you'll see here is it does pick it up, and then you can – you can do whatever, okay? So I want to talk more from a five-out perspective today and talk about how you can beat this defense um, in five-out. So let's say, for example, they're playing you like this, and again, they're going to use a right here. Now, this is my favorite, favorite concept to beat this defense, and it's the first one that I'm going to start off with anytime I play it because I think it's the easiest one. Um, and basically what we're going to do is almost everybody knows if they're going to defend trips tight end, that this guy right here is a number one player they need to worry about. So most people are going to user him, at least on the snap throw. They're going to be in the area here. Okay. Now, if they're baseline and press, typically, you know, if they're in a situation like this, I mean, oftentimes for them to put a play a true cover two over here is risky. Um, you know, more than likely they're not. You know, they might bring these guys down. Um, but I do want to hit on cover two for just a second. But, you know, if you get – you know, just a second here, you can throw it right there, and that can crucify cover two. So, to be honest with you, they're typically probably not going to have a hard flat out there, and if they do, they're in real trouble um, just in terms of how this is going to play. So what they're probably going to do um, is they're going to either put him in an outside third or what they what they could also do with this is once they get this guy to come in the, in the box, they can kind of move him a step and then basically unbase align it. So you see it looks like this, okay? So this is a little bit more, you know, of a decent look. And again, they're probably going to pinch these guys in to help with the snap throw seams, which is what you ideally want to go want to go to. Now their user is going to be typically here. That's where they're going to stand. So that it's virtually impossible for them to go from here to over here. 
So instead of using the number three, my suggestion is to use the number two. And the way that I use the number two is really, really simple. We're going to put Mike Evans on a smoke screen. We're going to, curl flat's my favorite play to do this out of. Uh, we're going to put Mike Evans on a smoke screen. We're going to put Scotty Miller on a hitch. And then what I like to do with this is go ahead and streak the tight end. Now, why, do, why would I streak the tight end? Well, the reason I would streak the tight end is because it forces the defender to have the user to have to respect the fact that there are two seam snap throws that we can make out of this concept. We can make it to the tight end. We can make it to circle. So that's going to hold their user in the middle of the field. And then what we're going to look to do is just simply hit the hitch and take our five yards. Okay. So then what's the adjustment? What, what, what are the adjustments to the adjustment? Well, the adjustment to the adjustment is basically two things. They could play coverage, uh, which they will. One of the things that a lot of times they'll do is they will put an edge threat on both of these outside guys. And then what you'll see a lot is you'll see like two, maybe two, something like this, basically. Kind of like a makeshift cover two. They may even put purples out here, but oftentimes it'll probably look something like this. So if they have two edge threads on the outside, these edge threads will shed very well actually out of this concept. But it doesn't change the fact that this is still one of the best plays um, to deal with this formation. The reason why is because again, you see he flows out here. He's a defensive tackle or a defensive end. So the likelihood of him picking that off is pretty slim. Obviously it does help with like the initial snap throw read. Um, which is where my second setup is going to come in. In my opinion, if you're going to be facing, um, you know, once you, once they start to adapt, right, once they start to adapt to that, which the main adjustment they're going to make is they're going to man up either this guy or they're going to man up this guy on the slot. And, I, and I'm telling you, these are – when you run this defense, they will over-adjust like crazy – to try to get a stop. That's really what the whole purpose of the defense is because they know you have to throw the ball fast. So let's say you get an adjustment like this. Well, my second setup that I really like is a simple little um, slant and then we're gonna actually use a, you can use a drag or you could use a slant, a slant flat. And then we're gonna take Godwin here and again, run him out of the way like this and then on the right side, what I like to do is actually streak my running back. So you see it looks kind of like this. Now, the reason why I like to do this is, again, we're trying to get the ball over here because we're trying to use the spacing to get this to get this thing to go. So I love the slant flat. The other concept I love is the slant or the curl flat. So if I run a curl flat, the reason I'm, I'm doing this is because what I'm anticipating is two yellow zones here, which you will get that. You'll get two yellow zones there. And then you'll get something like this. This is a defense I used to run back in Madden 13. But basically, what you'll see of this is we're going to kind of stress the outside corners. To me, you eat, to me, you don't want to throw the ball in the middle of the field. There's literally, if you count it up, there are six, there's seven players in a box right over the middle of the field. So what I would rather do is run a lot of concepts that are going to stress the outside of the field. So in this scenario, just a basic curl flat, and then you could take Godwin, and again, you can do whatever you want with him. I love the post against this formation because it forces the user to have to guard it, and then we can actually come back with this, you know, and, and, and do something as simple as motioning the tight end out and putting him on out, and then you've got a wheel. The reason why is because now they've got to have a guy in that area to cover that. They have to have a yellow zone if they don't have it, so that's going to hold their user on the right side, and then we're going to actually stress, um, we're going to stress that that curl on the back side. Another easy, and again, this is primarily this is primarily anticipating that they're going to be in some type of coverage where this guy is going to be manned up on that guy. They kind of try to guard the the hitch or the curl. Um, one of those two defenders basically is going to be in man coverage on that player. So the way that we deal with that, or the way that I like to deal with that, is through using a curl to Mike Evans and then using a um, like a little little route right there. And if you want to, you can max protect with this. Um, but you know something simple like this, and you see that you can kind of push that into the into, into that player. 
Now, what if they man blitz you? Well, man pressure, what you, again, what I'm trying to get at most here is you really don't want to throw the ball in the middle of the field because even if they, even if they drop zones, which they will do, um, they'll do something that basically looks like this. Like I said, you'll get something like this typically, maybe even a bluff blitz over the middle. But typically you're going to get something like this or, you know, they can roll a coverage, you know, like that if they wanted to, you know, something like this. Okay. What I don't want to do is, again, I don't want to throw the ball. Um, I'd rather, I want to try to play heavy sideline because they don't have anybody over there. So um, my favorite, another concept I really like, PA slot corner. We're going to smoke screen Mike Evans. We're going to streak Scotty Miller. And then what I typically will do on this in particular concept is I'll actually, again, you know, again, based on tendency, based on situation, if they're just going to send pressure at me all day, I'll send five out and try to try to quick dot it. If I think they're just going to run some edge threats and try to get at me that way, then that, you know, now I could do some other stuff. But really what I like to do with this concept, I love the curl to the tight end over the middle um, or a deep in route, something like this. Uh, five, ten yard in routes, very good. This curl, and the, really what we're trying to do with this, we're trying, again, we're trying to hold the user. So we want to have the curl. We always want to have something to attack them in the flat. So I love the curl wheel out of this. And my first read is really the wheel. If they blitz me, I'm going to throw that and I'm going to take my 10 to 15 yards. What it forces them to have to do is it forces them to have to put that corner on the right side of the field into a hard flat. They can't really get out there. If these guys are in the hard flat and I'll show that real quick so like let's say that they're in something like this and you run a wheel so it looks like this watch this hard flat it can't get there it can't get there especially with the defensive line so they have to drop the linebacker which they don't want to do because that's where their edge threat is so they're not going to do that um, or what they have to do is they have to drop the safety. So if they drop the safety, now they're going to be in a coverage that looks like this, right? And then again, we're base aligning this, of course. So we go with, you know, again, just basic adjustments. But this is how they would probably try to stop a wheel. And then again, you'd have, you know, again, you'd have something like this in the middle of the field. Um, but what you could get here is now, again, if they over adjust to stop your wheel, so you put a streak here, and maybe you go something like this. This is a just as good as a curl, but now let me just show real quick. If they're in cover three, you could throw that seam. Now again, their users there. That's what you got to kind of account for. It's why I don't like to throw the ball in the middle of the field because in this in particular defense, that's where their user is going to be. You can pretty much guarantee yourself that that is where their user is going to be. Okay, so as a result of that. What I'd rather do is have routes in the middle of the field that's going to have to hold, they're going to have to wait or they're going to have to hold on it, which is why PA corner with the curl wheel. And then now I'm going to outflank them on the left side because they have to they have to be able to have somebody out there. So if there's no hard flat defender, we're going to throw that and we're going to take our 10 to 15 yards. And it's really honestly that simple. And then what we'll do in certain situations, I'll show you one other thing that we can do with this defense. Um, but another thing that I love to do, this is a max protect setup, but this is a slant post. So we're going to go post to Godwin, post to Evans, and then we're going to slant Miller. Now they're going to blitz everybody out of a cover two, and you've got um, pass protection, and then you can work your route. So the big thing with defenses like this is you need to space the field. It's really, really important. One of my favorite, de or favorite, 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 favorite concepts um, against this in particular uh, con or, uh, defense is this right here. So it's a zig to the number one, um, a hitch to the number two, a flat to the number three, a post to the tight end. This is a really, really good blitz beater because again, we put their user in a position. He can't cover the whole field, right? So if you've got something like this, this tight end pulls the yellows inside. Their user has to go guard this wheel. And again, I could, I could have thrown that just a little quicker. Um, but you see, I kind of am already anticipating where I'm going to throw based off if there's pressure. I think that's something really important. So let me show you real quick. So if I go two hard flats and a hook curl, really aggressive coverage here. And then, um, you know, again, typically you're not going to get something like that. Typically you're going to get something like that on that side of the field um, just because it's, it's really not 
a great coverage if they if they if they hit you over the top with that if they put a fade on the field you could be in a lot of trouble but the bottom line is you get a, a heavy blitz and then typically what you got here is you notice that the running back is open and I could streak him out of the running out of the backfield too to make that a little bit easier of a read um, but let me show you one more time here so again a, a hook curl a hard flat we're gonna blitz everybody and I just want to show if their user doesn't run over here which he's not going to want to he's gonna to want to run um, over here then this should be wide open so let me show you real quick and it's all hot routes which is cool right in that little alley okay and you see how good that can be you can do the same thing at a PA shot wheel so I'll show that real quick too um, again the, the one thing I don't like about PA shot wheel is that you're gonna put yourself in a position where it's a little bit more obvious what you're doing so you need something to hold the user you know that's kind of the idea with this defense with this with this in particular um, it doesn't really matter what they do it's gonna be really hard to stop this play but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put Mike Evans on an out route and then honestly from there again you have to understand this is they're, they're baselining or they're packing the box heavy. They're not going to put anyone over the top of these two. They're, not, they're what we call uncapped receivers. So what I like to do with all, with this is I actually, I actually like to do a double wheel. And the reason why is because I'm anticipating I need something to hold the user. So I need the user to go to one way or the other. So it doesn't matter what coverage they're in, even if they're in a basic cover two, it's very difficult to guard this concept. The big thing with this too is you need to be mixing up your mixing up your plays you know so if you're gonna if you're gonna want to run a uh, you know let's say you want to run a curl flat maybe you think about running it to this side of the field and this is a great great I'm gonna show what I'm about to show you is really really good um, in particular against a shaded down cover two look so you've got got one on a curl and then on the back side you know maybe we run a, a drag something like this very good play call uh, but what you'll see on this is this curl, if you snap it right, you can throw that against a hard flat. So it's just a simple snap throw, um, and I'll show it to you again here. But it's very good against hard flat, heavy cover, heavy underneath coverage. It's really hard to pick off. It's just really hard uh, for them to pick it off. So you're just sitting here, snap, oh, he blitzes. Okay, we'll throw right there. And again, patience and taking you underneath to me is critical for this. And then at the right time, um, you know, you could go to something like this and and try to hit your post uh, over the top. But you need the, the shots, the, they need to be calculated. They need to be calculated. They need to be accounted for. You have to understand they're, they're threatening you with a, with a seven-man box, okay? If you want to pick it up, you need to block seven. So what that means then is you need to account. So maybe you run something like this, and then again, you run your slant post. And I think this is the best concept um, to try to have shot plays within, because you have great check down read that's really hard to user, um, and you're gonna get in space over the whole field. So that is how I would beat this defense. It all starts with curl flat. I didn't hit on this too much, but this RPO zone uh, bubble real quick, I just wanna show something. This is not a terrible call. Um, what you'll see is because you have a numbers advantage. So you might mix that in a little bit too. Mix in the run. Mix in. I mean, the, the big thing with this, again, is you need to mix stuff in. Um, you need to be, you can't be one dimensional when playing a defense like this because they can just over adjust to you and sit on some of your best plays. So what you need to be doing here, one of my favorite ones too is a little zig, little zig fade. Um, this right here is really good for this kind of defense because again there's just so many people packed in the middle of the field but your PA slot corner is gonna be really hard to guard out of this um, you know the knee jerk thing they're gonna do is they're gonna put 30 yard clouds out there okay that's fine please throw that if you throw that you're gonna be fine okay you have to be willing to take your flats against a defense like this that's the biggest takeaway I have for you um, you want to I mean you can go five wide too I mean there's no reason not to um, you can go five wide the only reason why I'd like to go five wide is because then I can again stress them horizontally so you know I can run something like this 
right here, and there's a lot of stress on the defense horizontally, right? So if they're not going to guard the flat, then I'll take the flat, and I'll take three to five. Okay, I just get, I can't get in a situation where I'm forced to throw in a specific window of the field. It's way too easy for them to take it away. It's way too easy for them to just use her here or lurk here and take that away. Okay, easy high lows is what you're looking for. I mean, you could even do something as simple as this concept right here. Very simple little smash. Um, you know, high low stressing the defender. And as you can see, it's it's very effective. So, again, you gotta you gotta kind of plan it out a little bit. But you know, if you're if you it, again, I I don't think that this is a bad read here. Five out using a double wheel concept. Um, you know, something like this. And then what I would do is take this this guy Miller and send him up the seam. And this is basically again just taking advantage of this. And you see that these vertical hooks can't really get there. So because again they're so packed inside. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Four three even six one to me is a is probably one of the better defenses that I face this year personally. It's the defense that I struggle to get um, to 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 beat consistently, especially if I'm playing a really good player with it. Um, these are some tools. You have to play 4-3, even 6-1 a little bit differently. You just can't just sit back and drop back and throw. They're going to force you to have to pass. Just like when people run in the 4-6 bear, you have to play that a little bit differently because the pressure dictates that, the edge threats, all of those things. So because of that, you breathe a little bit, take your underneath, take your check down, outstretch them, and you're going to be in a pretty good spot in terms of how you're going to beat this coverage. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get my full, uh, all of my ebooks, join the Patreon. I've got 18 ebooks in there. You also get all the updates and any new ebooks that we release uh, while you're a member over at the Patreon. It's just 10 bucks. So if you want to sign up for that, there's a link in the description below.